Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, dear participants, and those who are watching us online. And uh, I want to thank you all for in joining uh, our discussion today. Uh, my name is Danilo Malchanov, and uh, I'm uh, head of uh, the TAPAS project. Uh, it's uh, abbreviation from the Transparency and the and Accountability in Public Administration and Services. This is a assistance project, a technical assistance project, which provides expert and uh, finance assistance to the government of Ukraine uh, to fight corruption uh, through the e-governance tools. And uh, it's my honor and the privilege to act uh, as the moderator today. Uh, and uh, I want to uh, remind that uh, today we are um, talking about how uh, Eurasian countries uh, develop e-governance uh, with challenging they face and uh, what is the future of uh, public administration in the digital world. And uh, uh, to exchange best, pra uh, best practices, today uh, we invited uh, two countries from the European Union uh, that earned uh, the highest scores uh, in the last uh, digital government assessment <clears throat> and uh, uh, now uh, treated as the um, front runners in the digital sector uh, of, uh, of Europe. Uh, and uh, now I'm talking about Estonia and Austria. Uh, and uh, today we also uh, will listen to uh, participants from uh, Ukraine and Kyrgyzstan. And uh, unfortunately, uh, a representative from Azerbaijan uh, won't join us. Uh, and, uh, um, uh, but uh, we, we hope the, uh, he will um, uh, uh, have such an opportunity in future. Uh, and uh, uh, But uh, talking about uh, Ukraine and Kyrgyzstan, uh, we can say that these countries have a, uh, uh, re recently showed a rapid, uh, uh, rapid development in, um, in terms of uh, digital reforms. And uh, I would like to just uh, quickly remind uh, our format and agenda of uh, today's uh, session. Um, and uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, we uh, every attendee will uh, have um, up to 10 minutes to present uh, the trends and achievements and uh, possibly ch challenges of uh, the country. And then we will have uh, time for Q&A session. And, uh, uh, I prepared a couple of uh, tricky questions for you, so uh, be prepared. And uh, uh, not to waste time, uh, and uh, continuing my welcome speech, I would like to give a floor to Hannes Astok. Uh, he's, a, he's executive director, chairman, and the, of the management board uh, of Estonian e Governance Academy, and a big friend of Ukraine, by the way. Uh, so, please, Hannes, uh, the floor is your, yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Danilo. <clears throat> and hello, everyone. I'm not only a big, big friend of Ukraine, but also of Kyrgyzstan and many other countries. <laughs> so, uh, we are working closely globally with many governments, but uh, we have special attention to Ukraine and, and Kyrgyzstan currently in ver through various projects. <clears throat> so, uh, E-Governance Academy is a, is a global consultancy organization and, and we are assisting governments in their digital transformation from various aspects. And uh, <clears throat> today, if we are talking about um, uh, transparency and accountability in the public administration and services, I think there are, there are three topics that I, I like to underline. But the, the digital government is, is definitely a great tool for anti-corruption, it's a great tool for transparency, but it's a great tool also to improve government's efficiency, but also citizens' efficiency. So <clears throat> Estonia has, has reached a lot, and I think most of you are, uh, are familiar with Estonian progress. So uh, it's pretty digital country already today, especially from the aspect of, uh, of the public services, and uh, <clears throat> there is like almost 99% of the public services are are available online. I cannot say that the take up is also 99%. There are still people who, who like to visit government office and discuss to the government officials and submit paper applications, but this is especially elder, elder generation. So, um, so there are just a couple of missing online services like you cannot marry online, you cannot divorce online, and you cannot um, 
sell or buy the property online. And this is not because technology do not allow us. This is because we'd, we'd like to uh, protect people against themselves, actually, we, we should say. So this means that uh, if you want to marry, maybe after midnight, and then you wake up in the morning and you can do it online, so you, you marry online after midnight and wake up in the morning. So you may think in the morning that this was not the best idea what happens. But, uh, but technically it's possible, but it's just because to avoid this kind of um, issues. And the same may be with uh, real estate or property. So if you, if you sell, sell uh, your, your house or, or donate your house to someone just by emotion, you may later think that this was not a good idea. So for this purpose, you need to visit either online or offline notary and then he or she must prove that you really want to do it. So again, it's not the technical issues, but rather, rather issues uh, uh, to protect citizens against themselves. So <clears throat> uh, what we have learned in Estonia during the last 20 years that the development of a digital government, it's not only a technical exercise. It's very much about changing uh, rules and regulations around it, what actually means it is uh, a lot of um, change management exercise. It's not only that we are digitizing the existing stupid bureaucracy around us, it's more about how we simplify how the government is providing the services, how we, we make it more proactive, how we make it more um, accessible, both from uh, a technical side, but also how to make it more understandable for the citizens, how um, uh, the, the service is provided and what he or she must do. And last but not least, the principle once only, what is more and more used both in Europe, but many other countries, we need to use the existing digital data in our government databases to provide the services, not to ask the same questions from the citizens again, not ask the same documents from the citizens again, because most of the data we are asking from the citizens for various public services is already existing in governmental databases. And, and let me show you just um, uh, uh, three slides. Uh, I hope it's appearing right now. So, so what are the cornerstones of Estonian uh, uh, digital uh, government. As mentioned already, there are three pillars. It's a technology, legal framework, and change management. Uh, but um, uh, but uh, if you're thinking about uh, just a second, as usually computer is thinking a lot. So, <clears throat> so if you are thinking about traditional public service delivery, this usually means that citizen must visit uh, a lot of officials collect a lot of certificates and then submit it back to another government official. But actually the same information what is stored in the government databases is the one what the citizen or businessman is collecting. So definitely much better option is already if uh, we can use one-stop shop, but this means also that citizen or businessman must visit government offices at least twice once to submit the application and second time when to pick up uh, uh, requested uh, service or certificate or whatever is requested. So Estonian understanding is kind of self-service. Citizen or businessman can do everything by themselves by using existing digital information. And, and here we see that what is, the, what is actually needed for it. We need for it that the data is in digital format, that the data is accessible, for the services, so it should be uh, connected. I cannot say it should be online, so it's connected. It doesn't mean that it is accessible for everyone, rather it means that it's accessible for the certain services for specified people who can access one or another service, including myself, if I'm asking my own data. So there should be secure data exchange and portal and citizen applications. And finally, there should be strong digital identity. And I'm very happy that countries who are participating here today are, are probably sharing the same vision how, how the ecosystem of the digital government should, should function. So um, at least countries we have been working with in Eurasian region have a similar understanding how to move forward. And, um, and definitely 
based on this ecosystem already, various government agencies, ministries, agencies, and municipalities can build up uh, as many as possible services they, they want. So, so uh, but, but the important part of it is, is definitely not only technology, but rollout of the technology. And, in, and, and especially it, it um, considers a digital identity. We have seen in many countries that digital identity is existing in the forms of certificates, what might be provided in flash drives or something like it. But usually the bottleneck is that it's not broadly rolled out until every citizen is not having his or her digital identity in the pocket, either in form of soft certificates in his smartphone or, or ID card with a chip, it's, um, it's useless. So, so, so the key to a broad public, public access to the government online services is, is a strong rollout of the digital identity. And, and I know many countries are working with it, but still, still the big question is not only to implement digital identity as a technical solution, but also to roll out to whole uh, adult population. And bigger the country is, uh, much, uh, much bigger the challenge definitely it is. We can say that it was relatively easy in Estonia with 1.3 million people, but it's a much, much bigger challenge in Ukraine with 43 million people or for Uzbekistan with 34 million people. So, so, so this is the, one of the biggest challenges. To conclude, um, we believe in Estonia that we can do soon everything online. Maybe those exceptions, what I presented earlier, uh, still remain. Maybe we can do marriage also online to submit the application. And after one month of a kind of thinking time, we can <laughs> finalize this procedure also online. So, so also the government is much about procedures, not that much actually about the technologies. But we truly believe that the future is that citizens can do all necessary communication with the government through their smartphone. Um, and not only that they must request the service, rather government should propose them options when, when the time is coming. And it's not only that uh, to replace the driving license when it's expiring, but, but also proposing when your kid needs to go to school. So maybe a year earlier already proposed for the citizens what are the options for the schooling? Um, uh, what are also options in, in other life situations? And definitely all those uh, so services must, must be simplified as much as possible and reuse the existing data from the government databases. So it's basically a couple of clicks on your smartphone and basically yes, no answers. So this is what we believe to. And, um, and we are really happy that also many countries um, participating today are moving remarkably fast in this track and, and taking as a sample Ukrainian uh, DIA mobile app solution. It's, it's much better than Estonian e-government altogether. At least this front end in DIA mobile app is, is something what is not existing in Estonia. So we are really happy that if someone is moving forward faster than we, we are happy to catch up and learn from you also. So thank you very much and happy later to answer your questions. Thank you, Hannes. Uh, thank you. And uh, thank you for your pleasant words uh, uh, in, uh, in direction of Ukraine. And uh, uh, that's uh, actually uh, our uh, next, um, uh, uh, next uh, uh, attendee, Czeslav uh, um, Banik. Uh, and uh, he is the head of uh, development of e-services directorate of Digital Transformation Ministry of Ukraine. And actually, um, Tislav was responsible for the implementation of the DIA project in Ukraine uh, in the product owner role, I guess. Uh, so, uh, Tislav, uh, you're welcome. The floor is yours. Yes, just a moment. I'll launch uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, Hannes, for all the compliments that you've uh, said to us. And uh, uh, we're really, uh, really uh, happy uh, to launch such a project and to have such an uh, support from uh, Estonia too. So uh, I will try to, yes, to share my screen. 
its own digital state and uh, oh, slide show. So uh, I'll try to to be now uh, to have a very short speech uh, up to 10 minutes. Uh, so if uh, I'll be too uh, late, uh, please do not tell me and I will finish. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I will. It. Yeah, definitely. I will interrupt you. Don't worry. Uh, okay, so the digital state is is a general strategy of uh, Ukraine, and uh, as you know, in Ukraine we have the Minister of Digital Transformation, and this way we are going to make uh, all the public services uh, available online. And uh, while we are doing this, we are working on uh, developing the uh, governmental registers and uh, other databases. They to be. Uh, saved and today to be uh, very reliable in uh, our times so uh, the uh, first thing that we've done uh, was a presentation of a brand beer it, it was a very necessary step for us because uh, we were a new ministry and our ideas uh, uh, were uh, absolutely new for ukrainian people and especially for ukrainian authorities so and uh, we work it uh, to create on, on creation of our brand idea and uh, there was a very uh, good idea because people supported us even uh, before we launched the DM mobile application and before we launched the web portal so this this way uh, we have presented a new kind of communication between the government and the people or the government and the citizens so and uh, we said that uh, we are going to be very understandable very uh, easy and uh, simple uh, on our side and we are going to make the public services uh, uh, easy and uh, really uh, comfortable to get them so uh, this way we have got a great support from our people so and uh, until now we have uh, two main uh, platforms the web portal Diego and the mobile application and uh, uh, on a few words on the web portal we have uh, more than uh, 14 million of uh, users uh, on the web portal and uh, 72 public services and uh, it's the same as uh, uh, Hannes uh, told us before in the Estonian experience uh, it's uh, it's a kind of one-stop shop where appear all the available public services that we have in Ukraine. And uh, uh, in Ukraine, on this public service, we have the fastest business registration. So opening the small entrepreneurship in Ukraine takes already up to 10 minutes because we have, or maybe seven minutes uh, even. So we have uh, just 10 fields uh, in the form, on the application form to uh, sign for the opening the small entrepreneurship. and. Just after 10 minutes, uh, this uh, application form uh, checks automatically in uh, and in uh, one and a half seconds, you already get the email that you are, became the entrepreneur. It's, a, it's a wonderful and uh, in paper, uh, it uh, takes still uh, much more time and uh, even the number of fields uh, is 58 while it's just uh, 10 on the web portal. And uh, in addition to such a services, we have some temporary services. And for example, for entrepreneurs, we have, uh, we had the uh, public services of getting the financial help for them. And uh, these public services were provided uh, on a mobile application and the web portal and uh, yeah, you see on the screen uh, how many people used to uh, apply these forms and uh, you know we launched this uh, public service on on both platforms just in two weeks uh, of developing and uh, during the uh, couple of weeks uh, such a number of people uh, took uh, this uh, public service. So, uh, and uh, of course, uh, the main focus is on the mobile application DIA. And uh, uh, as you heard before, I hope that we have uh, up to 15 documents uh, in this mobile application. And we have uh, really uh, almost uh, 14 and a half million unique users in the mobile application. And if to uh, speak about the uh, uh, installation it's uh, more than 22 million as, as I remember so 
uh, and the major thing is uh, that uh, all the public services that we have in the mobile application, they are always simple and always shared. And uh, as you know, or as you see on this screen, we have launched a deferred digital ID in the world and uh, a uh, few words about it. So the first digital passport in the world, because we have the full uh, legislation of these documents uh, of a digital ID card and digital international passport or travel passport, and they are both available in the their mobile application. And uh, the full legislation means that uh, Ukrainian citizen can use them in all of the uh, lifestyle situation that we have uh, any day or any time, and uh, no one uh, can can't uh, uh, disallow you to use the digital passport. So, for example, uh, Ukrainian uh, citizen who use the mobile application usually uh, just left their documents at home, and not just the passport, but another like uh, driver documents and so on. And uh, really, you see there are a number of such documents. And uh, uh, of course, working on the digital documents means that you uh, have not just to uh, uh, digitalize the visual part of, of the document or just to make the legislation. You have to work in scenarios of uh, validation or uh, taking the copy of the passport. And uh, uh, on the back of all the documents, we have uh, the QR or barcodes, or it's a possibility, it's uh, existed for the possibility to use the uh, QR code, uh, external QR code for request uh, for the passport. So uh, if the company uh, is allowed just to verify or just to check your passport and uh, to be sure that you are uh, that citizen who shows these documents, they can scan. And this uh, verification goes not to the to your smartphone, it goes to the uh, demographic service database and uh, your face is checked from there. And uh, in the same time, if uh, we are, uh, if, if to speak about the copies, so the copies is uh, creating, it's uh, uh, almost new copy, uh, almost new copy of a document because uh, we are really, uh, reinvented that because uh, a copy of digital passport uh, not means that uh, it should be a, like a passport uh, of ID or international travel passport or paper passport uh, in uh, older style. So it's just the data from your passport. And of course, uh, it uh, uh, includes uh, the information of uh, when and whom was done this copy just to uh, be sure that uh, this copy can be used just once and uh, of course this copy of a passport includes the digital signature of uh, this copy that uh, it's uh, approved of this treatment so uh, it's a uh, what we've done uh, really new for digital documents and uh, it now uh, last week i were in the brussels and uh, i shared this, this experience with the couple with uh, the co colleagues from uh, european migration network and uh, they are really interested in this so and uh, ukraine is open to share this experience and uh, to share all the steps we've uh, First, uh, on the world creating of the digital documents and implementing the digital documents. Uh, so we uh, could share uh, with your counters and with your teams this experience. It's uh, really easy and we are really uh, would be happy to do this. And uh, on, on the ending of my speech, I would like to uh, remind you that uh, digital states is not just a strategy uh, and digital documents is not just about the, some functionality or all. Uh, that could seem like a wallet in a mobile application. Now, uh, this all is the part of puzzle of creating the most convenient and uh, user-friendly country in the world. So uh, this is our aims and uh, hope I uh, took my time. Uh, with. So thank you, Daniel. I'll stop uh, sharing my uh, presentation. And uh, so you, the yeah, thank you. to you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Slav. I mean, it really look impressive, and uh, also considering that all this was uh, done, you know, during the last two years, and yeah, it, 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 yeah, it, it became even more impressive. And uh, uh, yeah, and uh, fortunately, I, you know, um, I, 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 I'm proud, you know, to 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 be a part of all these uh, developments, and I'm happy that uh, Tapas as a project uh, uh, support um, uh, all this. Uh, and new uh, initiatives and uh, thank you and your colleagues uh, not to in, if, if, uh, not too afraid uh, uh, of uh, implementing new modern uh, tools 
and and it, it really it really useful in uh, and convenient and uh, but uh, uh, as i mean it's not only in ukraine but uh, you know the digital processes uh, um, uh, usually uh, you know uh, initiate a lot of skepticism and you know uh, some uh, you know uh, search and uh, threats uh, around it and uh, we will talk about uh, a bit later of, uh, um, during the q a session and uh, thank you again, uh, uh, Slav. And uh, now I would like to ask uh, Mr. Uh, Daniel uh, uh, Medimores uh, to take uh, his presentation. Uh, Daniel is the senior expert uh, of international relation and directorate for digitalization and e-government, e-government, uh, uh, Federal Ministry of Digital and Economic Affairs of Austria. Uh, Daniel, you're welcome. Thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, a great pleasure to be here. I have to admit that it was uh, already very impressive what I've heard. Uh, I am not so familiar with the region you are covering, so uh, another important uh, uh, reason for me to participate uh, today and not only to show you what uh, we are doing in Austria, but also to learn from you and I'm more than happy uh, to see that uh, Ukraine now with their presentation is uh, in certain aspects uh, already a front runner uh, on, and, and has solutions implemented that we in Austria are still working on. So thank you for that. Thank you to be a part of this distinguished panel. Uh, thank you also, uh, Danilo, for the introduction. Um, I may just uh, immediately start with uh, some uh, information about the activities uh, and uh, the, the projects that we are working on in Austria uh, at the moment and for the last couple of years. Uh, with the situation right now, uh, you are all more than aware uh, with uh, not only in more than just one uh, respect, uh, digitalization is a major engine of resilience and growth. The COVID crisis that we are in right now has once again made aware uh, how digitalization uh, is indispensable for staying competitive on a global scale and securing the future in all our countries. Uh, the crisis has definitely accelerated digital transformation worldwide. Uh, it is therefore key to build on this trans transformative potential of the digital economy and to strengthen digital skills especially and digital governance and to invest in the digital infrastructure and into new technologies. Digital skills is a factor that is of utmost importance for me. Um, th these are preconditions for a successful inclusion into digital society. After all, in modern societies, 90% of all jobs require some kind of basic digital skills. In, and in order to bridge uh, the digital divide, uh, we have a special focus laid on the ongoing development of new e-government solutions, as well as on supporting businesses in the field of e-commerce, for example. Uh, in Austria, the further development of e-government is going in direction M-government, similar to what we have heard from Ukraine right now. It is a top priority for the last couple of years. We have introduced the so-called digitalist arms or digital office mobile application that uh, we are promoting for our users. It is user oriented. It uh, gives access to e-government services available digitally and for mobile devices of all kinds. And these digital solutions should help to address the digital divide in terms of its geographical and cross-generational aspects. Furthermore, Austria has committed itself to a nationwide coverage with high performance internet connectivity by the end of this decade, infrastructure of highest importance. This will make life easier for all peoples, people, especially in rural areas uh, and for people with disabilities or mobility restrictions, for example. When it comes to the economy, enterprises must be fit for these new business models and the technologies that we have in place right now. As already mentioned, and you are all very well aware, digitalization offers great opportunities. And we have to support our businesses, especially the small and medium enterprises, 
There are, for example, in Austria, 99.6% of, uh, of all enterprises in Austria are, fall under this category, so small and medium enterprises. And we're supporting them in their digital transformation. We have some support programs. One is called KMU Digital in German or SME Digital. It enables small and medium enterprises to comprehensively exploit the huge potential that digitalization opens up for them. And digitalization definitely cannot be seen only on national level, it is a global topic. Therefore, European as well as international cooperation in this field is a key to success. Furthermore, the Austrian government is also keen to provide the best possible framework for innovation in crucial technologies as artificial intelligence, for example. And all these exchanges like ours today, for example, is good guidance, which helps us uh, and with you as your platform for exchanging experience and best practices. To give you just uh, a brief overview of some of our uh, activities and topics. So already mentioned the switch from classic, let's call it classic e-government to M-government or mobile government. Citizens and businesses as mentioned are now able to communicate and interact electronically with the authorities in a convenient, simple and accessible way. And at the same time in a secure, trustworthy and in a legalized, legally re uh, recognized manner. Since the COVID crisis, we also see a positive shift in people's attitudes towards using online services. Uh, we have launched a study uh, last year, the so-called e-government monitor, uh, two years ago actually already, um, including Germany, uh, Switzerland and Austria, where three out of four people now and online users can imagine to deal more often with authorities online. And we also see a trend when we look at the rising number of, uh, let's say, electronic identities in Austria. We have played a pioneering role in e-government in the last, and we are trying to keep up the pace and intend to do so and to strengthen our role in the future. The uh, mobile government uh, and the smartphone has become the main communication tool nowadays for most of us. This is why we are pursuing this mobile first approach for our governmental services. As a major step, we introduced the mobile government uh, uh, platform called Österreich or austria.gv.at three years ago. It's also including a comprehensive mobile app called Digitales Amt or Digital Administration, uh, which tries to include services similar to that presented by our colleagues from Ukraine. For now, we have um, projects uh, like the ID Austria, which is the follow up of the already established electronic identity in Austria. It's a full scale electronic identity to verify your identity online for official as well as private purposes. It is an upgrade, as mentioned, of the already established mobile electronic identity. And uh, we have a pilot run uh, at the moment. Uh, the ID Austria is already on European Union level pre-notified within this so-called EIDAS regula regulation for using uh, the identity uh, in the uh, internal market of the European Union. We are also working on uh, including uh, documents into the application like the digital driving license. Uh, we are not that far uh, like our colleagues in Ukraine. We want to include for, in the first step the driving license. Uh, this will happen this year. Um, best possible outcome would be after the start, it will be acknowledged, of course, in national level. When we would like to see it to be uh, acknowledged and uh, recognized and cross border use, maybe in the future, even on EU level. And as the next steps, we're also planning to introduce some more other documents like uh, digital reg registration documents. Um, also already mentioned by, by Hannes was the approach of the once only uh, of highest importance data for, of citizens and businesses already available. They should not be uh, asked to provide these data uh, once and uh, often again. This is a time saving biz for, for business citizens as well as for the administration. Therefore, we are working on our Austrian business service portal, which is one of the bigger portals in Austria with more than 70 administrative proceedings, over 
400,000 registered businesses included, and now also with the possibility of digitally creating a business, but, but not as fast as in Ukraine as well. What the EID acceptance in Austria is concerned, we have around 3 million active mobile electronic identities, with around 90% of them using the mobile application digitalisant, with a further tendency to rise in the future. On the strategic aspect, we have the so-called digital action plan, uh, which is the Austrian digitalization strategy uh, introduced in 2019 um, as a general policy on digitalization in covering questions of how to create growth, jobs, prosperity through digitalization and how to provide secure digital administrative services for businesses and citizens. With our uh, digital action plan, uh, we have laid the necessary foundation for using the experience gained also during the pandemic to make Austria more crisis resilient for the future. And we're trying to, of course, uh, use digitalization in all areas of our responsibility in a targeted manner to foster competitiveness, innovation, well-being, health, climate protection, uh, the promotion of culture, you name it. Also, just uh, to mention artificial intelligence, we also are working in this, uh, on this topic as many others do, we have recently um, uh, published a strategy on artificial intelligence with strong uh, connects to the activities going on on European Union level. This should establish the necessary framework for a prosperous, responsible and ethical use of artificial intelligence in Austria. So this includes ethical principles, the legal clarity without hindering innovation, uh, of all kinds of standardization of IE systems, enhancing the use, especially of uh, availability of data here, strong link to open data, to open government, uh, and modernizing the public sector with the help of artificial intelligence. And I know I'm running short of time, so I will just, uh, pinpoint uh, digital skills, the strengthening of digital skills is of utmost importance. This is very much to do with a lot of activities. All our colleagues are also working on, so only with the knowledge about the possibilities, also about the dangers, uh, our employees of the public administration, as well as our citizens and people in business are uh, aware of uh, what they can do and how digitalization and e-governance can help them to uh, prosper and to be successful in their uh, businesses. With this uh, diverse uh, measures and activities presented here, Austria will design a further digital transformation, hopefully in a positive, in the best positive way. Uh, we're trying to leave no one behind the pr principles of the Austrian digitalization strategy and the digital action plan are to create growth, growth jobs, prosperity, of course, to improve the quality of life of all our citizens in all our regions, and of course, also in all age groups, and to provide secure, modern and accessible administrative services for businesses, as well as for citizens. And with this said, I thank you very much for your attention and make it back the floor to Danilo. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Daniel. It was uh, very useful. I mean, uh, and uh, we, now we not, uh, know a lot uh, about the uh, where uh, where this digitalization in Austria uh, comes, and uh, it's uh, it, it's very interesting uh, to hear that uh, um, artificial intelligence technologies, you know, so like widespread uh, in in your country, and it, it really it really matters because uh, in Ukraine, I know it was like similar. At, um, you know, several attempts uh, to uh, use this kind of technology, but not of uh, all of them uh, was uh, were successful. Uh, so uh, yeah, it will be uh, so we can discuss AI uh, te uh, technology implementation uh, in uh, our Q and A session. Uh, so and uh, now we are moving to our next speaker, and um, I would like. Uh, I'm happy to represent uh, Azamat Burjuev, uh, head of the Dig digitalization department, uh, administration of president of uh, Kyrgyz Republic. Azamat, uh, you're welcome. The floor is yours. 
which is mine. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Danila. Uh, I'm very happy to be guest of today's session, and I'm very happy to see my old friends from the Estonia, Hannes. How are you? Uh, my grace to you. And I think uh, with the Mstislav, I had a meeting uh, last year in Kiev. We have the close relations with the Trimbita project, which is supported by the e-governance academy. And uh, we, Trimbita we, is, a, we, we, is a part of my uh, directorate too in the <laughs> Ministry of Digital Transformation. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I think we had a meeting, Mstislav. I, I remember your mustache, very beautiful mustache. <laughs> mustache. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yes, so um, in Kyrgyzstan, we are trying uh, to implement digitalization. And as my friends, colleagues said, uh, the technology is uh, only, I think, 10% of the problem. And most of the problems is uh, legislation and understanding of the people, how the digitalization should work uh, in the government, in the business and in the uh, everyday life of the citizens. And I have, I always uh, uh, received a question from the journalists, from the uh, higher high rank officials, when, when the digitalization will finish, how much money do you need to finish this digitalization in Kyrgyzstan? And, <laughs> I I just start to tell them that that is infinity very uh, big process which will never stop and never end and they say okay we don't know that uh, that is the big uh, process so uh, maybe we would not support it uh, five or six years ago but anyway we are uh, trying to do our best and. Uh, from the perspective of the uh, president administration, we have a lot of uh, paradigm uh, about the digitalization. And my colleagues told about the uh, government services, public services, which are provided through the digital uh, tools. Uh, and other colleagues talk about the digitalization as a tool to implement the e-governance and see how the uh, budget spends their money to to the uh, ministries how the budget spends the uh, money to the uh, nation and they see the digitalization as a tool which controls the flow of the uh, different resource people resource uh, uh, human resource i mean uh, money resource and another uh, different approach is uh, digital economy when we, we think the digitalization should stimulate the market digital market should provide the opportunity to the business and the population gain the wealth gain the money through the digital uh, tools and platforms and of course we try to approach all of these uh, uh, digitalization uh, paradigms, but uh, I think uh, it's very hard when you have a lot of uh, vectors to develop. But um, in uh, two, in 2016, we have good connection with the Estonian uh, colleagues, and we implement big platform X Road in Kyrgyzstan, and uh, this platform is a main platform which exchange uh, which make exchange between state agencies uh, information is much easier but I think in my my opinion is uh, the biggest uh, exchange was the the view view of how uh, different government agencies should exchange the information that was the biggest um, uh, challenge for the Kyrgyz uh, government. And now we have already uh, all the uh, government agencies are connected to the system and we step by step uh, trying to uh, make uh, this uh, paperwork process more digitalized. <clears throat> and my colleagues talked about the 
public services which are provided by the state portals and uh, different platforms and we uh, in Kyrgyzstan we do uh, uh, a lot of work to provide the public services but we understand that many public services is a side of side effect of the uh, paper processes so uh, when it was back in uh, back in the past uh, paper workflow uh, we start to provide the people uh, some public services using the people as a uh, postman to send or request information from different state agencies and we re-understand uh, these processes and trying to reduce actually public services uh, and eliminate uh, some public services to make uh, life more easier for our citizens and of course uh, it's work uh, of course firstly it's uh, uh, we don't have any technical issues about this uh, integration but we have a lot of work to uh, change the people mind that they don't have to request this paper uh, if the if the uh, government official received requested this paper for 50 years and one day young guy with the glasses came and say no you can just click the button and receive this information they don't want to believe it and uh, it's very big work uh, uh, to uh, make the change inside of minds of the uh, government uh, officials and a uh, couple weeks ago i received the short message at late time from the prime minister with a link to the dia presentation and he asked me why we are we don't have such a product in kyrgyzstan uh, and i say actually uh, sir we have such a product the name is tunduk and we have a mobile application which provides same services as the dia uh, we have big state portal and uh, this portal is a part of the uh, digital ecosystem in kyrgyzstan uh, and it connected to the document system it connected to identification system and as hannah say uh, we uh, in kyrgyzstan in 2021 we faced one big problem that we have to we see the bottleneck uh, that was the uh, identification of our citizens and uh, we have a lot of consultations with the uh, estonian government with the different experts and and of course we implement that uh, basic identification should have to be uh using the pki infrastructure and uh, it works very well but uh, i want to uh, tell that um, in kyrgyzstan we implemented the biometric identification and uh, kyrgyzstan is a, only one country that used the biometric identification for the voting uh, so we have president elections we have parliament election using this biometric identification and right now we are uh, implementing the biometric identification to uh, provide the public services for the uh, our um, citizens and we give the service uh, uh, which uh, uses used by the banks and the different uh, companies they can uh, using by this service get the information from the uh, state agencies uh, if they uh, make the biometric identification of this citizen so it's very uh, i think a very uh, good step to digitalize the public services because we have for example a lot of certificates requested by the banks from the government agencies when the people want to open account or have a different products from the uh, finance system so uh, we started from the um, uh, banks but in the close time we will provide it to our uh, and other business structures so it's my close uh, Asumat, very Asumat, sorry, short sorry, uh, so, yeah sorry for interrupting you but yeah you by the way you mentioned uh, like a very important issue uh, that really uh, uh, you know like uh, border uh, all, all of us, and uh, I, I, so I would like to 
uh, you, um, I would like to ask you uh, to expand a bit on that. Uh, I'm talking now about the electronic collections. So uh, you mentioned that uh, you have such uh, kind of like practice and the uh, uh, how, how can you can you provide uh, more details about the last connection? What is the level of connection local or national and whether these two uh, this tool has enough uh, trust uh, from citizens and what's the percentage of citizens but uh, uh, it's, it's very it's very uh, interesting and but I, I I'm asking you to be very short. Yes, uh, we started actually I am uh, the co-author of this uh, biometric identification system for elections and uh, I think uh, I can declare that that system is very very transparent so, uh, we see that Kyrgyzstan uh, uh, shows only, I think, 30% uh, of um, uh, voters. So uh, it's not like in uh, very close countries when they have about 90 or 80% uh, voters who are visited uh, and make elections. And, you mean uh, active citizens, thing, yeah, who, who vote? Yes, yes, we have only 30%. And it's, it is very uh, uh, close to the reality. And we see that from the different uh, data sets that's, that is correct. And second one, uh, when the people, uh, we see uh, that the um, politicians have very close, very close uh, numbers of voters. Waiters. For example, in uh, back 2016, we have the two. Uh, uh, we have president elections, and we have two candidates. And the difference between these two candidates was only 10 or 15, 50, 15,000 uh, people. Uh, so it's very close, and it shows that the system uh, works very uh, precise and very transparent. Mm -hmm. So Thank for you. the system, we don't yeah. have any any uh, problem, but we see that the uh, candidates uh, work with the voters from the different uh, risk uh, systems. So they. Uh -huh. pay I see. Them. I see. Yes, uh, Thank you. Thank you, Azamat. And I, I just would like to request a quick comment from Hannes. As the, as he represents uh, the country uh, which uh, implements uh, first. Uh, full electronic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Full, uh, full elections uh, uh, more than uh, 15 uh, years ago. Uh, Hannes, uh, how now, after 15 even more years, uh, you can assess. Uh, uh, the efficiency of uh, such kind of uh, like remote election process. Yeah, thank you. Now, I, I think there, is, there are a couple of important aspects. First of all, uh, access to the voting. So, so people, Estonian citizens who are who are not uh, in the voting day or voting week actually in Estonia, they can vo vote remotely wherever they are located. Actually, so it doesn't matter either they are in Ukraine or. For Kyrgyzstan in Ukraine, if they are in Kiev, they can go to embassy and vote there. But let's say if they are in Kyrgyzstan, they uh, they just cannot vote because we do not have embassy in Kyrgyzstan. So, so it's important that you can you can do your voting from whatever corner in the world, and this is important for a democratic process. Uh, and second part is definitely also what our election officials. Also, municipalities who are actually using the, the locally the, the elections. Uh, it's a, it's a great efficiency. In in last elections, what we had um, a year ago, uh, a two year uh, uh, municipal election last October, where was almost fifty percent of the votes were given online. So this means that actually you also need less voting stations, less stuff, and also the counting of a vote is much more faster rather than in traditional manner. So you need less stuff also to a polling station who count the votes and control the votes and all this stuff around it. So, so this means that also election process itself become um, a more, uh, more efficient and, and more economic. Definitely we can say that um, uh, voting is such a such an event that you don't need to count money, but <laughs> but anyway, uh, every penny what you can save from uh, from one or another action you can use for healthcare or education. 
So in this sense, also efficiency of uh, elections becoming, uh, becoming more important and definitely also transparency. Yes, true, it's, <coughs> it's important, but also um, uh, the dependence on online systems or digital systems who are, what are <coughs> making uh, online voting um, uh, available, it's becoming more critical. But also this means that we need to work with two systems and test them um, before and do all the cybersecurity related measures also around it uh, more carefully and, and definitely it's not the same system <coughs> technically anymore what it was in 2005 when we started. It's, it's definitely very much newer one and much more resilient and, and stronger also by cybersecurity means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Hannes. And uh, my uh, following uh, question is about uh, especially cybersecurity and uh, digitalization. Uh, how to become, uh, how not to become a hostage or even victim of the conveniences uh, that widespread digitalization brings us? Uh, is it safe to use documents and uh, uh, can the state uh, protect citizens' personal data using the e-governance technologies? Um, I would like to ask Daniel uh, 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 how how uh, how in your country uh, you uh, you protect uh, and you ensure that uh, uh, digital uh, uh, digital identity, uh, personal data, and other assets, uh, digital assets, uh, can be stolen. Yes, uh, thank you. One of the most important questions uh, as well. So uh, the acceptance of solutions all altogether uh, is very strongly linked to the trust in services. So um, this is one of the most important preconditions. Uh, and trust, uh, you can build strongly on security. Uh, in Austria, we do have an electronic identity in place. Uh, for several years now, uh, it's well accepted and it's on the uh, highest uh, standard. Um, it uh, is also the case that the public administration uh, in on all level of the administration, but especially as we are a federal state on the nation state on the on the federal state level, uh, all systems are um, legally based on, on legal, uh, a legal framework that is uh, very, very strict, uh, implemented a, a highly complicated and strong uh, software solution in the background that is ensuring uh, that, uh, as uh, Hannes mentioned also for Estonia, only those people who are um, by their profession, be it public employees or the citizens or business entity themselves, uh, if they are concerned, uh, able to get information concerning themselves or starting an, uh, a process and receiving the outcome of the process. So this is really um, defined by law and by the architecture of the systems in place so that there is no doubt that all the data and the uh, information used and stored are uh, only seen and used by those who are allowed by law. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. As, as we almost uh, exceeded of time and uh, just my uh, last question to you all. And uh, I, yeah, I would like to get a quick comment uh, uh, from uh, every of you uh, about uh, uh, we've already mentioned today the pandemic uh, time uh, provide us, you know, with the new types of challenges and uh, now as never before digital technologies help us to mitigate these threats. And uh, I would like to ask um, everyone on how uh, your country utilizes these digital opportunities uh, in uh, COVID-19 times. Let's start with you, Daniel. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, maybe by, by three points. Uh, first, uh, as recognized, we are investing uh, in digitalization. Uh, for example, in the administration itself, we have started an um, innovative and service-oriented uh, approach 
with a new program called the Digitalization Fund, uh, valid for last year and for this year with uh, 160 million euros to uh, ensure that uh, digitalization projects, especially cross ministerial projects, have a strong impact. So, implementation of IT consolidation to get more out of, of the services and out of the money that is spent. And at the same time, also to invest into new or already established citizens and business services to improve them. I uh, briefly mentioned the, the Unternehmen Service Portal, the one for businesses. And very briefly, just two aspects that I already mentioned also. One very important for, for me is the skills factor. So uh, ensuring that people uh, understand the possibilities, but also the threats. And here this strong connection then to the security. Cybersecurity is getting more and more an issue. Unfortunately, I have to say, uh, so also people have to be aware of the cybersecurity threats and uh, the administration has to have the possibility to deal with this threat. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, and uh, I would like to ask uh, Azamat, uh, I can, uh, yeah, I can repeat the question. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm just asking uh, about the, how uh, your country utilizes the digital opportunities in the COVID era. Yes, that was <clears throat> very big challenge to the digitalization and we feel the big pressure of, to the, all our systems because the people start to try receive these public services through the, our systems. But uh, the first one that we faced uh, was the digitalization of education. A lot of child, uh, a lot of children uh, was at home home and they started to receive the uh, education from their home and we feel uh, a lot of uh, load to the our uh, uh, communication systems and another system and we and we see that we are, was not prepared to the such load from this uh, <clears throat> from this side at the same time uh, I think people start to understand that the, 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 the digitalization is very important because uh, they, they should stay at home and they uh, should receive and communicate with, with each other uh, through these uh, platforms. And uh, uh, for us, from, for the uh, digitalization specialist, it was the uh, time when you can uh, be on floor and uh, tell that the that you have uh, a lot of products which will help to uh, communicate the government, business, and the citizen. So uh, for us, uh, for the digitalization team, it was very hard time. But at the same time, we show that the work that we have done before is very important. And still, we uh, have a big political view from the uh, government officials from the hiring officials and support from the uh, our uh, citizens thank you Daniel. Uh, thank you azamat uh, for your comment uh, and uh, maybe my last i mean another question i would like to ask hannes uh, i i i, I cannot not i cannot to rise not to rise uh, this uh, uh, issue digitalization and anti corruption and uh, uh, maybe it's not uh, really like relevant issue for Estonia, but as uh, um, Hannes has uh, quite a um, huge experience in other countries. Hannes, how you assess uh, whether the digitalization makes uh, corruption, uh, I mean, it establishes a more transparent uh, environment and uh, uh, um, uh, tackle corruption? or it just uh, makes uh, the corruption schemes uh, more complicated? Well, thank you. Uh, first of all, I never paid any bribe in Ukraine and no one asked me any bribe in Ukraine, also, I should be honest. So in this sense, uh, I'm not involved. But, um, um, uh, but I, I think the digital government is, is really a great tool to reduce the risk of corruption because uh, in any traditional interaction between the government official and citizen, when two people are in closed room, so this means that there is always a risk that even someone is asking or someone is trying to propose uh, some bribe. 
So, so this is already the risk when two people meet in the, in the, in the closed room. So, but, but, um, but definitely online government is providing um, a, a much better options to prevent co the corruption because if there is no human interaction, interaction as our former president Thomas Ilves used to say, it's very hard to propose the bribe to the computer. So, so even if you want it, some, in some countries, it's a very much cultural issue, but historically or tracing back thousand years ago, but when you meet government official, you need to provide him a present. So, and it's still there uh, in some countries. So, um, uh, so um, making all those things transparent, making data automated, so you don't need to wait. It's all automated, providing you information handling your requests automatically. This all already reducing at least this kind of pet corruption or small low level corruption. Um, but also about high level corruption because um, digital government and let's say digital procurement, it allows you also to analyze the results of the public procurements, not only by total price, but also by let's say by unit price. And uh, I know in many countries, including Ukraine and Kyrgyzstan, people are doing really good research on it like uh, um, uh, NGOs uh, who are working on it. So you can also, by using big data, analyze but why some government institutions always buying the goods like 10% higher, uh, uh, um, higher price than others, or why they always buying from the same vendors. So uh, there might be definitely reasons, but sometimes it's building or like drawing you kind of also picture how people are connected and how it all works. So, so a lot of options. Definitely, you cannot kill all the corruption with digital government. It will be too simple. But it at least allows you to do a lot to reduce the risk of corruption. Thank you. Thank you, Hannes. And uh, it was our uh, last question for today. And uh, I would like to thank all the panelists uh, and uh, for, for your uh, uh, outstanding presentation. It was uh, really a uh, uh, big pleasure uh, to uh, have you all here uh, in one call. And uh, thank you for your experience and uh, for your uh, for, for sharing this uh, very useful information. And unfortunately, we, we don't have like unlimited time. And I guess if we uh, if we do, we will you know continue this uh, uh, dialogue. And uh, but uh, anyway, I guess we will uh, have uh, such kind of opportunities uh, in the future. Uh, so um, I would like uh, to thank you all again and uh, uh, to um, wish us all to stay safe, uh, motivated, and resistant to all the threats uh, that you know can interfere our plan of digitalization in our countries and. Uh, to stay together, to exchange, exchange data and uh, experience. Thank you all and uh, see you uh, in the next uh, series of uh, meetings. Thank you very much.